Dear brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ, on this day the church begins a holy season of prayerful and penitential reflection. Our attention is especially directed to the holy sufferings and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. From ancient times, the season of Lent has been kept as a time of special devotion, self-denial, and humble repentance, born of a faithful heart that dwells confidently on his word and draws from it life and hope. Let us pray that our dear Father in heaven, for the sake of his beloved Son, and in the name and the power of his Holy Spirit, might richly bless this Lenten tide for us, so that we may come to Easter with glad hearts, and keep the feast in sincerity and truth. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, be gracious to us, spare yes, us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, good Lord. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to prosper the preaching of your word, to bless our prayer and meditation, to strengthen and preserve us in the true faith, and to give heart to our sorrow and strength to our repentance. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to draw all to yourself, to bless those who are instructed in the faith, to watch over and console the poor, the sick, the distressed, the lonely, the forsaken, the abandoned, and all who stand in need of prayers, to give abundant blessing to all works of mercy, and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to turn our hearts to you, to turn the hearts of our enemies, persecutors and slanderers, and to graciously hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, O Lord, have mercy. O God, you do not desire the death of sinners, but rather that they turn from their wickedness and live. We implore you to have compassion on the frailty of our mortal nature, for we acknowledge that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. Mercifully pardon our sins, that we may obtain the promises you have laid up for those who are repentant. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Maybe so. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return.
Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. on all, O Lord, and abhor nothing you have made. You look past the sins of men that they may repent. You spare them all because you are our Lord, our God. Be merciful to me, O God, be merciful to me, for in you my soul takes refuge. In the shadow of your wings I will take refuge till the storms of destruction pass by. I cry out to God most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He will send from heaven and save me. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and contrite hearts that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you full pardon and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first lesson for the beginning of Lent, known as Ash Wednesday, is written in the book of the prophet Joel, chapter 2. 
Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Who knows? He may turn and have pity and leave behind a blessing, grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Declare a holy fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Consecrate the assembly. Bring together the elders. Gather the children, those nursing at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his chamber and the bride her chamber. Let the priests who minister before the Lord weep between the temple porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord will be jealous for his land and take pity on his people. The Lord will reply to them, I am sending you grain, new wine and oil, enough to satisfy you fully. Never again will I make you an object of scorn to the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be merciful to me, O God. Be merciful to me. For in you my soul takes refuge. He will send from heaven and save me. He will put to shame him who tramples on me. The second lesson is written in the second letter of St. Peter, chapter 1. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his glory and goodness. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, They will keep you from becoming ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. Therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never fail and you will receive a rich welcome into the kingdom, eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This, this is, is the word, word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He does not deal with us according to, to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. Do not remember against us our former iniquities. Let your compassion come speedily to meet us. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of your name. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter. Glory be to you, O Lord. Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men, to be seen by them. 
If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men that they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting but only to your Father who is unseen. And your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ.
Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. The season of Lent is a discipline. It is an exercise. An exercise is good for you, though it is by definition hard. The specific disciplines of Lent are the ones that Jesus mentions in the Gospel for today. Fasting, praying, and giving. And you'll notice that Jesus does not say, if you fast, or if you pray, or if you give. He says, when? Jesus assumes that his followers will do all of these things. When? Jesus says nothing about 40 days here. For all of these things are things that may be an ordinary part of the Christian life. When you fast, when you pray, when you give. But just as Jesus fasted for 40 days in the wilderness, just as he himself went off by himself to pray, so Christians have modeled their lives, they've ordered their lives after Jesus. And so a 40-day fasting time. In fact, in German, they sometimes called it Fastenzeit, fasting time. In Latin, they called it quadragesima, simply 40. It is a discipline, a training. For comparison, Physical activity is necessary for bodily life. If you don't move your muscles, they will atrophy and you won't be able to move anymore. But you probably don't need to run a marathon or even a mile in order to function. And so a person may exercise himself, discipline himself to run more than he has to for a time to strengthen his body. The season of Lent is such a time of spiritual and physical exercise. Now, before we talk about the disciplines of Lent, we must understand that these are not a new command, a new commandment or a rule. Not, in a sense, something that we have to do as if if you don't, then God's going to get you. There will certainly be, for example, some people who should not fast. Perhaps nursing mothers or diabetics because of their diet or so on. Also, there are not to be rules about which foods to abstain from or, or which prayers to say or what gifts a person should make. It is not for one person's practice to coerce another's. That's why Jesus says, when you do these things, do them in secret. So that they are not to be paraded around or announced to others as some kind of badge of piety. Finally, there is no personal merit gained before God for how you fast. God doesn't like you any more or less based on, what you, on how you fast or pray or give during Lent. Fasting. Fasting simply is to abstain from something, usually food. There's a kind of fasting that we should always go, which is simply to, to enjoy all things in moderation. The opposite of fasting would be something like gluttony. God provides for all the needs of our body through his gift of daily bread. Indeed, our body needs food. But our, our body's desire for food does not rule over us. If it did, it would be harmful to us. And so the practice of fasting is a, is a discipline of reminding us and our bodies that it desire, its desires do not rule over us. We are instead captive to the word of God. We live to serve the Lord and his words, not the desires of our flesh, and so we might fast for a time to show our body who is boss. 
A practical example of this might be someone who, who fasts on a Sunday morning, so the, the very first nourishment of their day is our Lord's body and blood. Or it could be someone who disciplines themselves, maybe during Lent, to, to take smaller portions or not go back for seconds or skip lunch a couple times a week, as an example. That's fast. Prayer, well, Christians are always to pray. Prayer is not optional for the Christian, but let's face it, an undisciplined, irregular prayer life is often a non-existent prayer life. For example, if, if someone says to you, I brush my teeth, just not regularly, we would say they don't brush their teeth. Lent provides an opportunity to perhaps establish a richer, more disciplined and regular life of prayer. For a concrete example and, ex and suggestion, I cannot encourage and suggest Luther's small catechism highly enough. There we have a very specific suggestion for prayer every evening and every morning. If that's not part of your practice already, Lent might be a fine time to begin. And also each week we will have the opportunity to join here for Vespers to participate in this service of prayer that, that comes from the church's long history of Christians coming together every day to pray. This year, we'll also use this time to include every single member of this congregation by name in our prayers. That's prayer. Giving. Giving to those in need is also something that Christians always are to do. If what we confessed earlier is true, and if we truly deserve from God nothing but temporal and eternal punishment, and yet, and yet we find ourselves having everything that we need for body and life, and everything that we need for eternal salvation in Jesus Christ, we might well say, well, what then shall I do with all this abundance and wealth that I do not deserve and I don't really need? And even if I don't feel particularly wealthy, feel like I have too much of an abundance, it doesn't take, it won't take much effort for you to find others in greater need than you. In fact, in, de in need of things that you do have in abundance. You and I have the opportunity then to confess what we believe is true about God's providence and care and where our belongings come from by generous giving and charity. And Lent is a good time to discipline yourself to do that. Christian giving is always a good thing, but Lent may be a time for exercise, for establishing a more disciplined approach to giving. Perhaps your giving life has been like your prayer life, irregular, and all too often non-existent. This 40-day preparatory fast called Lent is an exercise, but it is not just an exercise. It is not just for discipline and training. You don't prepare for a marathon unless you're going to run one. And the truth is that the race that you and I are running is a matter of life and death. Fasting, praying, or giving do not give us life. They can't save us from death. But during Lent, at the, especially towards the end of Lent, we will once again hear again the blessed passion, the suffering and death of Jesus Christ and his glorious resurrection. But we're not going to reenact it. He already did it. The only question for us during this, this Lenten tide, the question is whether, whether you are connected to his death and resurrection. The, the question is whether at the end of the day, at the end of this race, your life, whether you will be found in Christ, in the benefits of his passion, or not. What that means 
is that Lent will also take on the characteristic of a battle. A battle for your identity. Who are you? Are you baptized into Christ? And if you are baptized into Christ, if you have been baptized, as St. Paul says, into his death and resurrection, then who are you? Then what does your life look like if you are in Christ? Does it look like the one who has spent 40 days in the wilderness fasting on your behalf? The one who gave up everything that he might come down to set you free? Does it look like the one who spent his nights, his evenings, his days in prayer where his disciples could not even spend one hour? The one who went before the throne of God interceding for you? Does it look like the one who gave who gave up his royal throne in heaven, who gave everything, all the riches that belong to God himself, that he might bestow those same riches upon you. The season of Lent is a season in which we are, we aim, we strive, discipline, to conform our our lives to the image of his son. Through cross, through trial, through difficulty. Yes, through fasting, through prayer, through giving. At the end of Lent, we'll find that it's not about you. It's not about your fasting or your prayers or your giving. It's it's about Jesus. And that you would be found in him. Since you are in him, you can recognize how good disciplines like fasting, prayer, and giving, how good they are for you. But you find your confidence and your security in him, in his living and dying for you, in his rising from the dead, in him who gives you new life and holy baptism. In Lent, We begin in dust and ashes. We begin in death and mourning over sin. So that we would know that it ends with Jesus. That it must end with Jesus. And that it ends in new life and resurrection. His and yours. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess the Christian faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the
Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, as we enter this Lenten season, we pray that you would grant us repentant hearts that are turned toward you. We know that we have often wandered from your ways and transgressed your law. Yet we know that we deserve nothing from you but death and punishment. Yet by your grace and power of the Holy Spirit, we also know that your Son took all that we deserve into his own body on the, death, on the tree of the cross. Throughout this holy season, fix our eyes on Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, forgive us for so often laying up for ourselves treasures on earth. You know how far afield our hearts often have been. Turn us, Lord. Inspire us to lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven. And give us generous hearts that we might support your ministry and mission among us and throughout the world. And that we might give aid where we are able to, to the poor, hungry, homeless, unemployed, and any others who need our help. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, as you renew us and refresh us by the grace you show us in Jesus, grant to us to abound in good works to your glory and for the benefit of our neighbor. Fashion us into your humble instruments who walk in the works that you have prepared for us, always keeping us mindful that it is your work and not our own, that we might not become puffed up with pride and desire to be noticed. Lord, in your mercy. Comfort your people, dear Lord, in their many and various afflictions. Relieve the sick, the suffering, the addicted, the troubled, and the dying. Give to them healing, peace, and recovery, as you so will. Keep us mindful that by Christ's wounds we are healed, both in this life and ultimately in the resurrection on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. We pray all these things in the name of our crucified and risen Lord, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we may be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Jesus Christ, through you all things were created, and through you all things have their purpose. You judged the world through water, but saved believing Noah and the church with the same righteous flood. With water you rescued Israel from slavery, destroying her enemy in the Red Sea, and led her through the Jordan River into the Promised Land. You spoke through the prophets, ruled through the kings, and mediated through the priests on behalf of your people, until it was time for your blessed passion the sacrifice of the true Lamb of God. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, 
He broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ, you did not turn away from the stroke of justice we deserved, but absorbed its blow only to rise three days later. As you promised your apostles, so comfort us with the knowledge that you have ascended into heaven to prepare eternal bliss for us and rule all things in our favor that we may carry out your Pentecost command to preach the gospel to all nations. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this Holy Supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.